Hi, I'm Sarah Bozich, and welcome to What's on Tap. I had a chance to stop by the Make Space and talk with director Liz Larrabee about Harrisburg. Now, you uh, went to Messiah College, but you're not originally from the area, or are you? Nope. Yeah. I moved about 17 times growing up, and then I was an English major at Messiah and um, just sort of fell into Harrisburg and the art world um, un um, unplanned. I moved into Harrisburg in 2006. I uh, helped start an intentional community called the Sycamore House through the Episcopal Church. And so that was why I, I came here originally. So What's the Sycamore House? Sycamore House is a, um, a gap year program funded through the Episcopal Church. And in exchange for like a year's rent, mm -hmm. um, there are uh, program members living together in community in the same house and um, doing community service in Harrisburg. So what was your impression of Harrisburg at that time? Oh my gosh, I am so charmed by Harrisburg. I yeah. think it is, it's such a beautiful place. I mean, it's you have the river, you have this incredible architecture. People are friendly here, like noticeably I friendly. Agree. Yes, I've never found it difficult to engage this community and I've been very grateful for that. I've loved living here the entire time I've lived here. One of your jobs in Harrisburg, how we, I think, first interacted was when you were doing the events for the Midtown Scholar. Yes. From the outside, it's a bookstore. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, it is, you know, a live music place. It is a forum for the community. It's an art gallery or two or yeah. more, I don't know. That relates a lot to what you have here. Yeah, I was really drawn to working at the Scholar for exactly those reasons. I think it's first and foremost a community space and it's every socioeconomic demographic walks through those doors and that's really a meaningful thing. It's a real, it's a real gem that we have um, the ability to interact with all walks of life in one space. I think that's the the strength of larger cities. So that was that was definitely a commonality between working at the Scholar and working here is an interest in engaging with lots and lots of different kinds of people in lots of different ways. The space itself is also multi-purpose too. So you have live music here, you have art shows here. What's sort of like the breakdown of artists working here versus people visiting here? So there are six bedrooms essentially in this row home. It had been um, used as a row home originally and so those have been turned into artist studios. So we have seven studios who rent space from us. They can come and go as they please. I have my studio here as well. I'm here just all of the time. We have open studio tours every third in the Berg along with a rotating gallery show. So that's a very easy way mm -hmm. to engage in the Make Spaces to come for a third in the Berg. We have about six concerts a month. We have a storytelling forum called mm -hmm. Untitled. We have a poetry forum that happens here. We have lots of different workshops and classes that happen like a monthly collage workshop, um, a digital photography class. You are the administrator and you're also a creative, you're also an artist. So how do you make that work? The, the title's director, we actually have um, an office administrator, Amanda Owens, and um, so that is that is a very, um, <laughs> that's an important distinction for me because I am terrible at paying bills, so <laughs> somebody else really needs to be in charge of that. Um, you just call that detail-oriented. You're not detail-oriented. I am less detail-oriented. <laughs> than perhaps anyone else in this world. Um, <laughs> so um, the administrative portion of the job is really, it's, it's geared toward being uh, the public face and um, having conversations with people, giving tours, um, looking for interesting program development opportunities, that sort of thing, writing bylaws. I've, I do a lot of that kind of thing. The job as an artist is actually how I make all of my money. I'm a, I'm a, a volunteer for the Make Space, and um, I have been able to survive on cardboard portraits for um, almost a full year now, which is something That's I'm- That's amazing. I'm, I'm able awesome. to gamble with that while I don't have a mortgage or a baby. I don't have a baby mom. Um, but, <laughs> so I'm in an interesting spot in my life as well as an interesting spot in the life of the make space. So tell me about the neighborhood, like where we actually are located, where the make space actually is located. So we're located at 1916 Third Street. 1916 is the year of Pancho Villa. That's how you can remember where we are. And we're uh, located in a row home at the end. Our immediate neighbor is Third Street Used Furniture Store, where you have probably bought a lot of dressers. We're right around the corner from the Uptown uh, Little Lamps. 
And Tree Cover is a music collective that is uh, located about a block from us toward the back. And they are really involved in the community here as well. They have a band called Flower Garden, which plays here a lot. There are a lot of like creative people mm -hmm. who are trickling into the neighborhood. Um, people that I met at the Sycamore House, people that I um, know from like community gardens and uh, lots of like artists and musicians are moving in. And it's, um, it is becoming a really vibrant neighborhood for, um, for the creative people that I know. The homegrown market. Oh, so this, you can't market. leave one thing, you can't just do one project. <laughs> you want to volunteer for yet another project. <laughs> if we're trying to address the needs of the creative economy in Harrisburg, which is, that's behind the mission of the Make Space, you need a place to be able to make your stuff. You need to be able to sell your stuff once you made it. This is a great space and I have a huge portion of affection in my heart for it, but um, we're limited by the space. Sure. We're not zoned commercially, and so that means that we oh. can't sell properly out of this space, um, except for gallery shows, and so for production art and handcrafts, mm -hmm. we perceived a, a real need for a, just a place to go and buy local art. Like I wanted to go buy pottery and stationery from people yeah. that I knew. And I love it. It is so encouraging to see how much creativity is in this region. There are amazing artists in this immediate region. You like to dig in the trash a lot. <laughs> I, anyway. I literally like digging in the trash. You enjoy digging in the trash to create art. Yes, uh, actually I got a lot of that um, personal aesthetic from my mom. She, growing up, she just had this very strange, wonderful style in, um, in decorating and it was just sort of this pastiche of whatever she could find. Mm -hmm jammed up together on the kitchen table and I really loved that aesthetic and I loved what that meant for creativity and in terms of even just like recycling like I just yeah. it's a very practical and like sort of depression era baby way to go about it but uh, because I have limited resources I have a lot of college debt and um, and I live in Harrisburg and I am a full-time volunteer so all these things mean that I have like a dollar and <laughs> I like being I like being creative within my own means mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah so so that's that's like a huge reason why I work with cardboard almost exclusively and actually it's a kind of wonderful often I will come to either my home or the make space and see just a stack of donated cardboard from people I don't even know oh, just wonderful. on the porch and I thank you all uh, are most of your bands local or I know you've had touring bands but which is we try to, our events director, Doug Weaver, um, is really, really great at um, booking shows. And we sort of, we try to do a little bit of both. I love featuring our, our friends that have mm -hmm. bands. And there's definitely, there's definitely quality control that happens here. Like there's really awesome music that happens out of this space. And um, Harrisburg is well situated within, on the Eastern Seaboard. We're just in yeah. between all these awesome cities that have really great, established music scenes. Typically what we do is try to pair a local or regional band with a touring band. You have to be able to um, bring people through the door and if it's a local band, their friends will come. And if it's a touring band, even if they're amazing, they might not have the right. the draw to... If no one's here, exactly. I've heard yeah, of them. Right. right. So part of it is the responsibility of the venue to you know, keep a standard up to be able to say, we always have great shows here, so you'll you'll be safe if you come to a show here. Um, and uh, safe in a lot of ways. No That's knives at That's our shows. Point. Well, thank you for joining me today. This has been really fun. Absolutely, thank you. Cheers. <laughs> I just want to film more that way. If we say brilliant things when we weren't ready, it's all right. for the better. We don't exactly. have to remember it. I can't really stop saying brilliant things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See, I told you this would be fun. <laughs> I just wish your hair wasn't so messed up all the time. <laughs> Oh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs>